Greetings and welcome back to part 6 of making your own turn-based RPG. I think this is going to be the last part because there's just a few more things to set up and I think we can get it all done. So let's dive in and start working on that. So there are a couple things that we need to work on still in the battle controller. Uh, if you remember, we actually got through the menu selection, which is awesome, but we haven't set up the functionality of actually defending or trying to escape. So inside of the step event, let's go ahead and drag in another uh, thing of code here. And let me increase the size. And this one is going to be <coughs> actually checking the win conditions. So right now, we can't win and we can't lose. So we want to make sure that that a combat can actually end. So again, checking while we're in combat, we're going to say if we have destroyed them, so if the enemy's health is less than or equal to zero, then we are going to get some experience from that enemy. With that enemy, we're going to then destroy them. That way they don't stick around. And then we're going to go back to our previous room, which is room start. And we're going to set Sarah back to where she should be. So dot x equals object Sarah before battle x. So this is why we were saving these. Because once we move her, we have no way to say where she was unless we store that inside of a variable of some sort. And that's what these were for. And we want to adjust her sprite as well because she's no longer uh, hunting or fighting. So we don't want her to be having a bow in her hands. And then we're going to also create the fade object one more time. It uh, doesn't matter where you make it. But that way it fades into the next room. It looks really nice. And then we're finally going to set in combat equal to false since we are no longer fighting. Okay, with that, now we can actually win. Now we can destroy the enemy and actually go back to where we were, which is great. But we also want to be able to use the other functionality of the menu. So we want to be able to run from battle. So, if you remember when we when we chose to run away, uh, we set the boolean variable ran away equal to true, and we're gonna say if that becomes true, we're gonna automatically just destroy the enemy. And actually, let's go ahead and open up this win condition and copy this on over because it's the exact same thing, except. Uh, Hold here, shift tab, can go back, which is really nice. Uh, except that we aren't going to be getting any experience. We'll leave that line out because you don't want to give them any experience. And then at the end, we're also going to say ran away equals false because we are no longer running away. Otherwise, every time you enter the battle, you'd be running away and you'd have some you'd have some issues there. And then the last thing we need to do in battle controller is increase uh, the defense when that's chosen. So while we're defending, we need to do something as well. So while we're in combat, we're going to say if is defending. Again, that's a Boolean variable that we've created, a Boolean being just true or false. Uh, we're going to upgrade her defense. Defense while defending. And then if she's not defending, we're going to set her defense just back to one. Okay, now you can run away from battle, you can win a battle, and you can defend while you're in battle, which is great. Now let's go to the stat keeper, something that we haven't actually touched. Uh, this object has a lot of potential. I'm just going to be doing a very small, simple thing with it. We're going to add in a draw event. And all we're going to do with this stat keeper is actually just uh, display the player's name, experience, and health. Now, this is an object that is going to be persistent, so you could actually keep track of how many enemies they've defeated, um, how many movements they've, how many steps they've taken, how long they've played the game. If you wanted to have a more casual game, this is where you can keep all of that information and be able to check it to say, you know, what are they doing? What do they need to do? What are the, what's the record? You can compare high scores amongst players with things like this. We're going to do something really simple. It's just going to be uh, drawing a few things. Um, but if you wanted to, this object can be much more versatile. So what 
a place that works pretty well is just in the corner here. So we're going to say player health. Now when you're drawing a text, if you didn't know, you can use this little plus symbol and you can actually draw you can actually draw more than just what you put in here inside of the string. The only caveat to that is if we actually tried to say wanted to say uh, show current health, this is going to give us an error. Um, the reason for that is because this is expecting just a string. And if you're not familiar with a string, a string is just, uh, well, it can be anything, but in this case, it's looking for just text. And if we said plus this right here, we are going to get an error because it's actually going to realize that this is an integer, not a string. So we need to convert it. I'm going to just format this right here. So if we say, just put string right there and then parentheses around it, it will convert this right here to a string, which which uh, will then make this allowed. It will it will come out formatted properly, which is great and exactly what we want. So we're also going to put the XP here plus string there it up current XP and we will draw the name fifteen forty five name. And name is already a string, so okay. Let me just make sure that we have a name set up for the character. Yep, we do. There, because we're displaying it. Okay, great. So that will draw the name, health, and experience at all times. Uh, what we need to do is make sure it's visible and persistent. Go into our room, and let's make sure we have it in there. Yep, stat keepers right there along with battle controller. So that will that will actually be there and that will stay there the whole time and display exactly what we want. Okay, a few more things. Let's open up enemy parent because right now we can fight, we can win, but the enemy is never going to attack us, which is kind of boring. We're going to add an event, step, step, and then we're going to drag in some code. And in this code we're going to do well we're going to do two different things with two different uh, pages of code here. So first one is going to be increase enemy energy. And so while the while the enemy is fighting, while they're in combat, this is the same thing we did for Sarah, actually. We could probably could have just copied it. But if it is less than max energy, if current is less than max, then we're just going to increase it. And again, this right here would be a great place to say how often do your um, enemies attack. You could actually replace this with a variable like uh, enemy attack rate and then you could change that really easily. Uh, right now this is pretty slow so I don't think you'll ever die unless you you know walk away and go, go out for lunch and come back then you might be dead. Uh, but that's pretty slow just to show you that it is working though. Then we're going to drag in one more thing, one more code and this one's going to be um, attacking the player. So now we want to check um, if the energy is full if we're in combat, and current energy is greater than or equal to max energy, we're going to say object Sarah dot current health. This is where we're going to deal the damage. And uh, I can't remember if we've used clamps or not, but if not, uh, it's a really great um, function that says you can't go below or above a certain threshold. Because if you try to do just this, uh, without the clamp, so you do damage minus Sarah defense, um, you could run into a problem where the number you actually get from that math formula is going to be negative. So then uh, either the enemy could heal Sarah when they attack, or if the enemy had a higher defense than your attack for whatever reason, you could actually heal the enemy. So you want to make sure you're clamping these values so that you don't ever have a negative. So we're saying we can never go below zero, and we can never do more than the damage that we could do. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, it's kind of important to make sure you got there. But I think that will that will actually do everything. So let's go ahead and run this, make sure I didn't make any typos, and that we have a fully functioning turn-based RPG. So health, XP, name, all displayed right there. Let's run into combat. His energy bar is going up. We're doing this. Let's try defending. Okay, we used up half our energy to defend, which is great. So he's going to attack. That's half of our health right there, or half of the, 
damage that we should take, and it goes back up. So now let's try to attack. Perfect. And now we take one because we're not defending. Let's try to escape. Oh, we got a problem with escape. Let's do a quick check on that. So we've got uh, in battle controller, it's going to be at line 44 in the step event. So let's open that up. Step event while we are, oh, not there, in the first step event on line 44. So where is our problem? We've got battle menu selection is equal to 2. And we are checking for space bar. And, OK. So I know exactly where the error is. Now let's run this one more time and press defend and see exactly what the problem was, where it actually was at. No, at escape, sorry. So max energy. So we're having a problem get, ooh, that's what it is. Spelled energy wrong. Oops. <laughs> okay. Now let's try running that. Hopefully you guys saw that and fixed it yourself. Let's try to escape. Okay, we did, we escaped. Now it was fortunate that we did it the first time. So, now we have a fully functioning turn-based RPG where we can attack, we get attacked, we've got health, experience. Uh, when our experience reaches a certain level, we will go up a level, which is exactly what we want. Um, and let's make sure we can kill him. Ooh, we can't kill him either. So, oh, okay. Uh, again, another typo. Very common. Uh, here, enemy XP. Can't find it because it should be capitalized. So let's go into step event in battle controller. It's going to be at our end condition here. So win condition. And enemy ID dot XP. Let's just make sure. In parent. Yeah, see it's capitalized. I didn't capitalize it. Okay. So you have a fully working RPG now. Uh, there's a lot of ways and a lot of a lot of different places you could take this. Um, I gave you the basics, the foundations uh, for something that I really like, and I plan on building a game myself. Uh, I hope you guys will take this and do awesome things with it. If you ever want to see more things, uh, have any questions, comments, please leave them below. Uh, send me a message. I could also do another series on a more advanced RPG, turn-based if you wanted to. Right now we've got one player and one enemy. I found that to be fairly simple to set up. If you wanted to see how to do more, I can do that. If there's some demand, it, it would be a much longer series, although it would probably just build on this one, so that would be all right. But if people want that, let me know. If there's any other questions, any other things you want to see, um, I'm always looking for more ideas to know what you guys, uh, what you viewers want from me. So please let me know. I hope this was helpful. If you found it uh, enjoyable or helpful in, in, in any way, I would love if you would like and subscribe and I will put out more awesome content and series and tutorials and sneak peeks to the games I'm working on as they come about. So if you stuck to, if you stuck with me through the end, uh, congratulations, great job. That's awesome. And until next time, I will see you guys later.